permanence, perseverance and persistence in spite of all obstacles, discouragements and impossibilities. It is this that in all things distinguishes the strong soul from the weak. Thank you. Will you have your shape? Hmm. Did somebody mention beer? Were you on the beer last night, Mo? No, it wasn't, Grandad. Who asked you? Go away. Yeah, yeah, Grandad, go away, will you? You're so born. Uh, Billy, um, <laughs> I don't take uh, orders from you or you, Mo. Isn't that right, Ned? Uh, yes, Grandad, you have your own person. You're, you know, you can decide what you want to do, all you want to do. I told you that. Go away. Shut up, Mo. <laughs> anyway, Ned, are we still... In Hungary? Yeah, we're still here. Boring, boring, boring place. Uh, Mo, I didn't ask you. Didn't ask your opinion. Yeah, it's pretty boring, Ned, you know what I mean? Any chance we can get back out of it? Maybe into Austria or something a little bit more interesting, you know what I mean? Yes, I like Austria. Uh, Vienna. The Champs-Élysées. That's Paris, you bleeding idiot! Oh, yes. Sorry. I, um... I get confused sometimes. No shit! You're never anything else except confused! Hey, don't be too hard no more. You'll be all too someday. Thank you, Billy. Mo, you really have a bad personality, Mo. I don't care, Grandad. You're so annoying. Making me so annoyed, you do. So I am. So I am. So I did. So you do. Where's this accent coming from, Ned? Is it coming from... Is that an Inish Keen accent? So I am. So I did. So I will. Why can't you just say, I'm angry? Why do you have to say, so I am? If I say, I'm angry, then you know, I'm angry. Why do you have to say, I'm angry? So I am. I'm very annoyed. So I am. I did that, so I did. Why do you have to add these bits on? Why do they add them on, Ned? Uh, I don't know, Grandad. It's just the way they talk, you know. It's kind of that mixture between that Loud and Monaghan accent, you know. Mm. I'm very hungry, so I am. <laughs> oh, Grandad, go away, will you? Rose sticking your bleeding beacon. And Ned was talking to me and Billy. Yes, but uh, I'm the senior citizen here. So I am. <laughs> okay then. Bye bye, folks. I'm going to go now. So I am. Oh, thanks be to God, he's gone. Uh, do you know what he's mean though by saying uh, I'm so annoyed? So I am. I'm. I'm so thirsty. So I am. I didn't do that. So I didn't. I. I don't know. I don't talk like that, Ned. You know what I mean? We dubs are different. Yeah, we Limerick people are different too. You're not from bleeding Limerick. How do you know where I'm from?
attention getter. I like the idea that some of the road signs are uh, are in English, so you can read them. Because Hungarian would not be an easy language to read. And I was just making a point there um, that uh, you know when you get stopped in these controls, you know, checking your documents and stuff like that, that um, a lot of the customs and police don't speak English and that is frightening really I don't think I've ever been in a country I've been to Italy Spain all these European countries the people that are customs and that are police that are dealing with truck drivers ever always have English it mightn't be brilliant English but it's enough to get by but I came came by uh, one of these controls the other day yesterday and uh, there was no problem in the control, but the problem what it was that the girl that was um, that was dealing with me had, hadn't got a word of English. And I'm thinking to myself, how can you get a job in customs dealing with truck drivers when you have no English? You know, you wouldn't get a job in customs in, in Denmark or in Sweden or in Holland or in, in, in France. If you didn't if you weren't able to speak English, you just wouldn't get a job doing that part of the job you know when you're dealing with truck drivers you're dealing with truck drivers from all over Europe and English is an international language and if you're working as a customs officer and you're stopping trucks and you have no English you shouldn't be doing it you just simply should not be doing it and this girl she was maybe 30 you know so she would have gone to school she would have learned English in school but she Maybe she's just lazy. Maybe she just... No, I said to her, uh, English? No. No. My colleague? No. I says, uh, do you not go to school? No. How, ca how can you become a customs officer or a police officer and stop trucks on an international basis and not be able to speak any English? It just... It's... It, it boggles... The mind boggles, really. She she obviously didn't 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 care, you know, and she shouldn't be allowed to stay in that job. She should be put off somewhere, typing letters or whatever she's doing, but not dealing with. You can't have someone dealing with truck drivers that has no English. You, you just can't. Not in this day and age, because everyone learns English in school now. Here we go. So here is the Staufest beginning. It says uh, 20 minutes, so let's see. Let's see, is it 20 minutes? It's now, we'll just time it actually. It's now 20, it's now 20 past four. So we'll see how long it takes us to get out of it. Stow, 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 stow. Ah, oh, bleeding stow, Ned. Yes, it's a stow, Mo. I don't like that word, Ned. Yes, I said, no, you don't like it, Mo. And I don't like the stow either, Mo. It's a stowfest.com. Yeah, so we're moving again here now, but that was torture now. That was a, that was 40 minutes now. It said a 15 or 19 minute delay, but I knew well from looking at that on the way up that uh, it was an awful lot more than that. And this flipping motorway, and I don't, they don't seem to be doing much on it. It's just, it's causing absolute chaos in Budapest. And they really should be working on this thing 24 hours a day to get that doing because it's absolute torture every day for poor people coming into Budapest from the south. It must be an absolute nightmare for them. So anyway, we're going to cross whatever river it is. We're clear of them now anyway. And I'd say there's 30 or 40 trucks jump the queue driving along the hard shoulder and that I just, I know I said it, I said it ad nauseum 
it just makes my blood boil when I see them queue jumpers you know they're just the lowest they're the, they're the lowest form of life on the road uh, queue jumpers they're just like road rats you know disgusting inconsiderate selfish fucking vermin that's what they are you know in case you didn't uh, realise that I have to mention that a thousand times sticky enough there on the far side but then again that's a I came down that way uh, um, but I came down at 11 o'clock in the day when most of the traffic was gone this is the traffic now that's leaving Budapest heading south so we're in the clear here now look at that in the far, in the far side there now that's exactly what we've been sitting in and now it's their turn now, I was lucky as I said on the way down I didn't have to sit in that because it was 11 o'clock in the day but at night time I can say people leaving Budapest heading south ooh nasty well we gave our 40 minutes sitting in it now so we're going to rock on He said Ram 28. There's plenty of room here too. I just need to open the doors now, that's it. And lamp around the bay. So oh, that's us tipped and we're just about to leave this place now. Take the next right toward Route 1, then turn right onto Route 1. Now, I have never been in Slovakia ever, and I've in the, I was in the Czech Republic once. So what I have to do now is just get to the border. 
and stop at the first service area and go in and get road toll box or whatever I need to get that's going to cover me for the road tolls. There's the first exit. There's the second one. And this is the third one. Exit the roundabout onto Route 1. In 200 meters, at the roundabout, take the third exit onto the E65, E75 ramp to Posseny, Bratislava 15. Okay. And that is just about as handy as you could possibly get it. I come out of the factory through two roundabouts and I'm on to the main road up to Slovakia, Bratislava, what I want to be on. Isn't that a gift? Continue on E65 for 15 kilometers. So we're into Slovakia in the darkness and I need to find the first service area. I should really have stopped back there on the border. Um, <clears throat> but I didn't. So I need to find the first service area and go in there and get my road tax. There's a sign for a service area on 2.5 kilometers and that would be wonderful because that's exactly where I'm going to go in and I'm not leaving there unless I get a bloody toll box because I don't want to be traveling in a country without a toll box. It's not necessary and it's stupid when you can get fined for not having it. So, I'll be going into this next area. Hopefully it's up here. And uh, getting my toll box. so much for that can't be got 10 10 kilometers he said take the next left in 500 meters merge onto re 58 e65 
Look at this. How am I supposed to get fucking tax here? Fucking assholes, the way they leave their fucking cars. Gonna have to pull it up here. Not too far from this place. I did. I did try to get parking. I made genuine efforts to try and get parking before I got in here, but I couldn't. It couldn't be done. You know, could, everywhere I went was full. Everywhere I went was packed. keep going until I get to this place and see can I park outside that's all I can do it's the only thing I can do all oh, quiet here like it's well then again it is half 11 at night 20 to 12 at night so it's just as well that it's not bedlam with traffic or I wouldn't be able to just to pull up whenever I felt like it. How many pallets? Four. Okay, how many? 26? No. Well, I, I, I need to know because of the weight. I need to know. 
Ay. So these are the crates I'm loading. Very strangely the way they're loaded. Perfect, thank you. Peter? I haven't got one. So we're out of here now. And following a conversation with my colleague Joe Moore, Joe said to me, if you want to be guaranteed, park and head for Wiesbaden, which is one of our deliveries. And he said, it's only 10 minutes out of your way. And he said, you'd be guaranteed to park there. He said, otherwise you could be in trouble. So I have to just to hand back. Am I going to be able to get by this fella now here? Not leaving me much room. Meters, turn right to stay on Pavel Cover. Not leaving me a lot of room, is he? To give this security person back their their tag. It's one second there now. Now. I got a little uh, tag thing yesterday to put in the window just, just to let them know the security that I was actually in there um, for, to visit a company and I wasn't just in there messing or dosing. So, a bit miserable out there this morning, but sure. Take the next right to stay on Pavel Kova, then turn right onto Lepenska. I'm basically just going back the way I came. Even though it was dark last night when I came in here. Take the next right onto Lepenska, Route 635. So, it is 500, 451 kilometers to the border, to the uh, Czech German border. So I have 451 kilometers to drive through the Czech Republic. I have to go back down to Bruno where I was yesterday, I came up that way, and then I have to, to head on for Prague, go around Prague and then head back in for Germany then. So it'll be a fair day's work. I don't mind. I'm loaded now anyway. I didn't really have any problems finding that place last night. There we go. It's handy enough. And of course the beauty of trying to find a place at 635 for five kilometers. The beauty of trying to find somewhere at night time is that you um 
sorry you've no traffic about so you can do u-turns and reverse back and stuff without discommoding anybody so Br bruno i'm following for b r n o it's not bruno it's bono is it b Br Br brono brono Shame about the rain. It's not as nice looking at videos when there's ra when it's not a nice blue sky. I see a little bit of blue, bit of sunshine there somewhere in the distance. Maybe it won't won't last too long. The rain. As I said again, I don't have any problem at all driving, and this is for people who have never been out here or people who'd like to come out here and are afraid to because you're driving on the wrong side of the road and all this kind of stuff. I don't find any problems doing it and I don't remember back when I started that I had any problems doing it. I had more problems driving a left hand drive out here than I had driving a right hand drive and that's a fact. Because most 99.9% .9 of the places you're going into, if the loading bay is designed for left hand drive trucks, just go around and turn around and reverse in. You know, don't be putting hardship on yourself. I would just go and I'd say sorry I'm just going to down the bottom of the road and turn around and I'd come in a different way because it's easier for me to get in rather than trying to blindside into a place you know I'm feeling under pressure I wouldn't if you can't find a place just pull the handbrake get out and ask someone but don't chance anything don't take any chance of going down a, a road that has a weight limit on it or could be a low bridge or something don't take that chance don't take that chance. Just ask someone. That's what your mouth's for. So we're in some kind of a town. This town is obviously, you know, it's we're, we're, not, we're not in an industrial estate on the side of a motorway, as you can see. The traffic is sticky enough here now too. I'm going for Roberno, B-R-N-O, the 46. All I have to do to stay out of trouble is stay in my own lane, you know? It's not rocket science. Don't be trying to dodge in and out of traffic. Just stay in your lane. You'll get there safely. I have to say, but I'm well impressed with this, this truck. And the fridge in this truck actually is bigger than the one in the DAF. It's deeper. It goes back further. And you can fit more beer into it. <laughs> That's all you're worried about, getting the beer in. And so what about that, Mo? If I am, Mo, that's all you're interested in, getting the beer into you. Mo, I, I'm the most responsible driver I know. I'm just shite. Couldn't even find a bleeding toll box. It's the size of a bleeding brick, and you couldn't even bloody well find it. Yes, because it was down in the dip, Mo. You didn't look. I did look, Mo, but I just couldn't find it. 
Didn't look hard enough then. Making a bleeding show of yourself, ringing the office, giving out. Yeah, Mo, but you weren't much help. You didn't offer to go and help me try and find it, did you? You're just sitting looking out the window saying, Oh, that's not my problem. Not my bleeding problem. Yeah, exactly. So what use are you? What help did you give? None. Exactly. So what have you got to say about that? Not my job, Ned. It's yours. So what is your job, Mo, apart from to sit there giving out all day? I don't know. Keep Billy in line, I suppose. I'm going to start by keeping yourself in line, Mo. I'm not at the stage where I'm going to sit like a gum behind crawlers either. Like, you know, it doesn't matter what country I'm in. I'm not going to sit like a gum behind people who are daydreaming or in no particular rush anywhere. I've, I've, a, I've a lot of work to do today and I want to get it done. So, I'm not going to be doing any heroics or anything, but I just don't want to hang about either. Like, I don't want to hang about. I could badly do with a shower. I know you could. Smell of you. Uh, 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 the smell of you, Mo. Where's me tea, Ned? Continue it's, on D46 for 39 kilometres. It's in the same place as the toll box was, Mo. Go and get it. Where was the toll box? Ha ha, ha ha ha. Wouldn't you like to know? I had to make 10 phone calls to find out where it was. A bit of roadworks, a little bit of Monica in my life, a little bit of roadworks all my life. Shut up, you bleeding fool, that's not even funny. And you are Mo, and that's just the funny thing about it, you are so funny Mo. We're on a contraflow here, <laughs> and there's not an awful lot of room now. And there's enough, enough, but the margin of error would be slight enough. I don't know what's growing there on the side of the road. Is it corn or... Can't really see. thing you don't see really much of at all in, in France and in Spain and in Italy roadworks himself here trying to keep up with me and he's sinking into the seat but I'm going by him anyway no matter what he thinks or what he likes I'm going by you mate this is a cracking truck when you say jump she says how high? Exactly, Mo. Exactly right, Mo. I say jump, she says. How high? Exactly, Mo. Well done, Mo. You're actually got something right for once, Mo. Get up. Hazard lights on, so we're coming to a traffic jam here, and this is the one that was predicted. the roadworks that were predicted.
So, we have five minutes of a Staufest. And we've come to a complete stop. You see all see the, the vehicles now going down? That lane is closed. And those vans and cars whizzing down that lane are the reason why we're stopped. But nothing will ever be done about it. There's nothing you can do about it. It's really annoying, but we had this before in Hungary last night. There's not a thing you can do about it. Not a thing. They will just keep piling down the closed lane until it's blocked completely. I just stick tight to the back doors of this truck. I just stick tight to the back doors of this truck. And you're not getting in. And neither are you. And neither are you. You can do what you like. You're not getting in in front of me, you fucking prick. Join the queue like everyone else. Fucking assholes. Told you I wasn't gonna let them in. I told you I wasn't gonna let them in. If somebody else wants to let these queue jumpers in, that's up to them, but I ain't. They're not gonna barge their way in front of me, I can tell you that for nothing. People have said to me before, you know, when I, when I do this, ah, Ned, live and let live, yeah. I let live, but they don't let live because they're 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 the ones that are that are trying to queue to queue jump. They see the sign the same as me, except I I'm obeying the sign and I'm getting into the lane that's not closed. And they drive down the one that is closed right to the very top, in in an effort to try and skip the queue. And that's all they're doing. So when you say live and let live, no, no. If they join the queue. Like everybody else here in this lane, there wouldn't be any stow back there. We'd be all moving slowly, but we'd be moving. I would. The reason I had to come to a complete stop there is because of the queue jumpers. So I wouldn't do it out here, and I wouldn't do it in any other European country apart from England. But if I'm at home and I see a sign where a, a, a two-lane road is down to one lane, I'll I'll go out into the closed lane and I'll block them from coming from passing. I'll go out into the lane that's closed and I'll sit beside the truck in the, la in the lane that's not closed all the way right to the very top of the traffic jam. And you'd be amazed how quickly it moves when you block all the jumpers. When you block all the queue jumpers from coming behind. When you stop them. When you block them from, from going down to the end of the closed lane. It's amazing how quickly the whole thing moves on. travellers call it showing fair play you know you got to show fair play but if someone doesn't show fair play to me I don't show fair play there's no reason why car drivers should think that whatever they're doing for their day is more important than what I'm doing. It's not. If they're not at work, what time is it now? It's 10.43, 11.43. If they're not at work, you know, then they're, then they're off. And if they're off, then what I'm doing is more important than what they're doing because I'm at work. Shame about the weather again. I'm gonna have to overtake this man now, he's pissing me off. So as soon as this car goes by me, I'm gonna be gone. Zoom, boom, shake that room. Oh, 
all of a sudden you start speeding up. I wonder why that was. Maybe he thinks I can catch him. Bother thanking me, it's all right, mate. He's probably thinking to himself, <laughs> Yeah, well, thanks for the flash, but I was going to come out anyway, so I'm not thanking you. <laughs> That's all right, don't worry. I'll get you on the next hill, matey, and I'm going to eat you alive because this old baby here is going to party on down. Party on down, Ned. Get them 500 horses flying then! Oh god, they will. But oh, geez, there'd be no better boys. Now oh, here's a, a, a no overtaking, which I don't like to see. And it says, from 6 a.m. until 10 o'clock at night time, you're not allowed to overtake. That's a long day. Ain't the hell, that's ridiculous. Yes, it's not funny, Mo. There's the ever popular sprinter. I'm sorry that they stopped doing the Vario because I really liked them Varios, but they're just too expensive. I was looking at some of them there, and ones that are like, you know, 15 years old, 16 years old, they're looking for like 15 and 16 grand for them. Like, that's crazy. As Mo says, I wouldn't be breakfast roll. I wouldn't be bleeding breakfast roll, Ned. Wouldn't pay that. I, I know you wouldn't pay that, Mo. I just want to, I know this might say, it might look boring to, to anyone watching this and say, oh, you know, but I, I want to give you a realistic view of what it's like out here. I want to show you what it's like on a daily basis to drive in these countries. And you're thinking to yourself, you look at a map and say, well, that's 450 kilometers there, she'll do, you'll knock that out in five and a half hours. You will, yeah, at 90 kilometers an hour, no problem. But not when you're in a Stauffest every 10 miles. Like when you're, I'm down now to 20 kilometers an hour and I'm lucky to be doing that. So this is where your time, this is where your, your hours, your driving hours get eaten up. They get eaten up by Staus, they get eaten up by roadworks. Uh, uh, they get eaten up by roadworks, they get eaten up by accidents. We've come to a complete stop now. Another contraflow here. Someone broke him down or what? Yeah. Oh, fucking twat. Oh. Someone has managed to crash. Some guy in a truck there with a big... Look at this for a mess now. Here, look. You see, like, this is what it's all about. Stau Fest. You 
see how much of a disaster now that that one accident now we're lucky on our side so far you know we're 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 moving along look just look at the far side there and the question you'd have to ask yourself as a driver is would you want to do that every week because when you're coming to the Czech Republic not so much hungry but when you're coming to the Czech Republic and you're going to Germany this is what you're going to sit in every single day of every of every week you're out here that's what you're going to sit in people are out standing walking around the road you can't blame them bored out of their tree going absolutely nowhere pulling their hair out no doubt there's a cop car going down there another one but like I mean you can imagine the disaster or the productivity loss now that's in that you know fellas with the logs that normally do two runs a day now do one today people that were on the way to meetings are not going to make them manufacturing deliveries are not going to be delivered on time and the knock on effect to the economy is, is huge but this section of roadworks has gone on now for how many miles? So if you want to do Germany guys, if you want to do the Czech Republic and you want to do any of these countries that are attached to Germany in some shape or form, this is what you're up against here on a daily basis. I don't think I've ever been caught in roadworks in France. I've never been caught in roadworks in Spain that delayed me. Look at that. It just goes on and on and on. I would be so sorry for those people. Mainly the drivers of course, the truck drivers, but you know, anyone with a young child or anyone bursting to go to the toilet. What are you going to do? What are you going to do if you if you want to take a uh, you-know-what? Go into the nearest ditch and stick your bare arse into the field and about 50 drivers looking at you. it goes on and on and on how many miles was that now and that's all it takes in roadworks one accident one breakdown there's another breakdown someone's car overheating or something those lads might as well just get the kettle on now because they are going nowhere. It's quite a while now since I've seen anything quite as bad as that and all it took the only difference between us and them is a truck that ran into the back of something because I can see the front end of it smashed now it's not major damage or anything but it's enough to disable the truck probably and this is the result of it
you have these big gaps you see your man's not even sitting in his he's not even, that truck driver there is not even sitting in the driver's seat he's sitting in the passenger seat because they're not moving nobody is moving the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please don't let me get caught in one of those today. Please. Please. that car is doing there trying to get into that lane silly mutt oh my 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 well God help them now is all I can say God help them And there's another reason why that's such a really bad mess is that they don't have the breakdown trucks nearby. They don't have them somewhere where they need them. And they have to wait a half an hour or 40 minutes for a, a breakdown truck to arrive. And in the meantime, this just keeps building and building. That has to be at least 10 kilometers now. I'm not trying to put anybody off, you know, coming out here to this part of the world, but that is basically it in a nutshell. Feel like jumping into the bunk and going to sleep, wouldn't you? Still no end to it. Just to remind people that we're in the Czech Republic and we're on the main drag from east to west heading in the direction of Prague or Para, whatever they call it here. There's literally thousands, thousands of trucks now we've passed. Not hundreds, thousands. Still it goes on. And one 
little accident, one little minor bump. And this is the result of it. I can overtake this truck here in front of me. Let this van go and then I'll have a shot at the title because he's annoying me. Right, here we go. gonna make it easy for me I know that but I'm going quicker than him so I'm gonna get by him anyway and still it continues this is the tail end of it here now what you can see is that the trucks and cars slowing up they're not quite come to a stop yet but they will be very soon and god love them none of them know what, what's ahead of them none of them have any idea what's ahead of them that pig there is no interest in flashing me in so i wouldn't even bother indicating i just pull in in front of him you know he's all day there to flash me in to let me know i'm clear and he just decides now nah, i'm not going to do that so I don't bother then making an indicator, I just pull in, you know, and I know, obviously when I know I'm clear, I just pull in, I don't bother indicating, if you're not going to bother to flash me in, I'm not going to bother to indicate. Oh, thank God we're out of that and we're away again for a while. It looks very same as Germany, the Czech Republic is really is the same as Germany, the roads are, are, are actually as good if not better quality than the German roads, they're as good anyway. And the the, uh, the countryside is, is very very similar. So it's obviously not as wealthy a country as Germany is, but you wouldn't know that now just to be driving through it. It's not like in Hungary where you see the ladders, see these cars that you haven't seen since the 1960s in Russia. You still see them in parts of Hungary. What we're dealing with here is a complete lack of respect for the law. On the phone, wouldn't you know? I knew it anyway. It's a phone stuck to his fucking ear. I thought I might have would have... I, I've got, I'll start that again. I thought I would have made it out of the Czech Republic in my four and a half hours drive. I thought I would have. You know what I thought, didn't it? Yes, Mo, the same as Grandad. Pissed in the bed and thought he was sweating. Yes, yes, I know, Mo. I know, I know. I know. I am aware. Look, I'm gone by him again on the inside, look. Look. Come in on top of me there. Right. Our 45 minute break is up. Leaving the services just outside Prague. 
I'm not sure if I stopped there before or could very possibly have. another four and a half hours Let's see where that gets us the biggest issue I'm going to have now later on is trying to find somewhere to park that's going to be the elephant in the room Yep, because it'll be, if I stop after nine hours, if I just do a four and a half and a four and a half, a nine hour shunt, it'll be, what time is it now? It's four o'clock now, so five, six, seven, eight, half eight tonight. Ah, I'll struggle to find parking. I'm more concerned at the moment about getting a shower. I went into it with that place there where we just stopped at. With my bag over my back. With a, a certainty that I was going to get a douche, but it wasn't to be. Nix Deutsch, Nix Douche. Nix, Nix, Nein. Nina Dusha. <coughs> Jeez, Dad, your German's brutal. Uh, yes, I know my German's brutal, Mo, and I don't mind that. I can live with that, Mo. I try, try, fear. Uh, well, your German is a little better than mine, Mo, but uh, you were always a bit of a Hitler anyway, aren't you, Mo? Ha, ha, ha. Nice one, Ned. Funny, yeah? Yeah, you were a bit of a Hitler. Heil Hitler. I'll heil you, you shut your mouth, Billy. I'll hide you in a box. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, shite in the bucket. Put you on your back with a box. You dirty, innocent fool, you. Ah, you sound like all the rest of them now, Bill. You sound like all the rest of them. Yourself and the Joyces. How will Joe Joyce? Yeah, how will Joe? You leave Joe alone. Joe's sound bloke. Pay any man this side of the UK. I ah, know. He's a shite in the bucket. He shites in the bucket for a whole two weeks, Billy. So McGinley said, anyway. Hey, you wouldn't want to mind that fella. He's half cracked, he's on drugs and everything, sure. Is are all on drugs, Billy. Speak for yourself, Mo. So we're on a counterflow. I tell you, it's narrow enough. And if you clipped one of them barrier things that they have there, it'd put a nice dent in your, break your headlight, like, you know what I mean? Fucking 50 kilometers an hour, all of a sudden, then a big burst. You on A6 for 106 kilometers. Back into the stow, stowfest.com. Jesus Christ. 
Christ. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Fuck, mister, you need to fucking slow the fuck down. Well, see, that's what happens when you drive too fast. I wasn't going hanging about there now. I had a quick look in there. The car, they seemed to be all right. They both had their seatbelts on. There wasn't even any airbags ranting up. But I'd say they got a bit of a fright. Absolutely dynamite. Absolutely dynamite. She's an absolute, she's an absolute humdinger. Another contra flow, but the traffic. Aha! Thanks for reminding me. Thanks for reminding me you were back on. Granddad's after falling over. He's either falling asleep or he's drunk. One or the other. Bleeding drunk, Ned. Smell a drink off him. He must have been sneaking the whiskey, was he? I don't know what he was drinking, Ned, but he's full. Got the dirty old yoke. Get up there, Granddad. Don't be making a show of us. Be making a show of us. Oh, we'll keep you. Keep a hold of you there. Well, that wasn't too long. We're back out of it now here, down here, so. I'm not that worried about finding a place to park. Um, because as I said earlier, it's like today is Thursday, so most of the uh, Eastern Europeans who are the ones that block up all the spaces will be heading the opposite direction, I hope. But even if I have to go into a parking area that's got no toilet, well they all have toilets in them, but if I can't find a service area, I'll just go into a parking area, it'll do me fine. I just need to get my head down for a couple of hours, that's all, and off I go again then in the morning. 
also have to say that the German signage is second to none, you know, their motorway signage is excellent. And you get a couple of different bites at the cherry before you go wrong. So if you do go wrong, it's your own fault because you get plenty of bites at the cherry. And it's not a big deal if you do go wrong, you can don't have to go too far to turn around and come back. It's a lot easier now with the sat nav. Before when you were trying to follow a map and it was dark and you were trying to look at the map to which road you should be on, then it was difficult all right until you kind of got used to the route. But uh, nowadays, no, it's nothing to it. Like you don't even have to keep watching the sat nav. It'll even tell you, keep left, take the second left. You know, keep in the left lane, follow signs for Frankfurt, follow signs for this, that. And if you couldn't do that then, you're at nothing, you know. We can't blame the sat now for that. There's a funny kind of a sky. Half it's black and half it's completely clear. And we're heading into the clear bit
this fucking Lithuanian blocking up the fucking place. You know, he thought he could put that because he has his hazards on that it's supposed to be like, sorry guys, I'm just fucking stopping here. Like, what the fuck is he at? third place no parking twenty one minutes left so we have another parking area up here in a kilometer but I already know before I even go in here that I'm not going to be able to get parked in here. I already know that I'm not going to be able to get in here. That there's going to be no room in here. Just find a space. I just find a space. Uh, good morning. There's a lovely blue sky out there. Uh, you join me in on the 61 in the direction of Koblenz in, in Germany. Uh, this is my, I won't say my final resting place because that sounds a bit dodgy, but this is where I managed to squeeze in last night and the very tail end of this parking and the thing that really annoyed me was when I took a walk up here the guy that was parked in front of me right and this is no exaggeration stopped about here and left a gap that size a gap that big between him and the person in front and that guy is still there that was there last night the other fella parked and stopped about here and look at, look at the distance, it's half a lorry length that he left. Selfish fucking bastard. Oh, I want to leave myself enough room to get out. He could have parked here and swung out without any difficulty whatsoever. But no, 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 Mr. Uh, me, 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 selfish prick stopped his truck here, right? Left a gap that should fit three cars in, right? And what it meant was that I had to manoeuvre myself for about three or four minutes to get the arse end of the trailer in off the road so I wouldn't be blocking people from coming in. So I'll show you where I, where I had to park, right? So that's, that's where I finally managed to stop. That's, as, that's as, around as tight as I could get it. Now I'm in on the, you can see I'm actually in on the, um, on the, on the gravel. There was room for me to park behind him, but Mr. Selfish, no, 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 leave a, a 20 foot gap in front of him. So I'm actually in on the grass here. I'm actually parked in on the grass. I didn't throw that there, by the way. That's disgusting. Now this is the problem here with the likes of this. In the pitch dark when I came in here, you see the likes of this here? That's what takes the front of your lorry. That's what takes a lump out of your bumper when you're coming in here to try you can see the tire tracks that people have already tried to squeeze in here and this is the problem with that that if you have a low ride of a truck that it will take a lump 
out of your out of here so I was just very lucky that that gully didn't take a lump out of my bumper there was enough room for as you can see there's enough room for two trucks here if people who are parking behind other people have a little bit of consideration for people coming behind and you know anyone that drives in Germany knows that it's almost impossible as you saw from the video to get parked and that's the only way I could get the truck in so I could actually take my break without going over my hours it's only literally just a, uh, a, a lay-by that's all it is there's nothing in it and the thing that sickens me is you see the likes of that rubbish there right there's a bin provided there for people to put the rubbish in and they just open the window and throw the stuff out onto the ground uh, I don't know anyway so this is where I am I'm just uh, completing my walk around there everything seems to be okay I wasn't interfered with and it was very quiet here considering there's a motorway right beside us it was quite quiet last night so yeah I had a good enough sleep I just took the bear nine hours I see they have their wind farms going flat out here too it's fairly windy around here anyway so it's the right place to have them I'd love to know how much energy how much energy or electricity one of them things produces in a day if it's going round and round I see them sometimes and they're stopped I don't know why they don't leave them going round all the time why don't they just let them go round all the time and if there's no wind let them stop amazing uh, constructions they are they really are like they're unbelievable the way they they're able to build them and then channel the energy or channel the electricity from them to a source where they can save it great brilliant idea I don't think there's anything wrong with them at all some people think they're eyesores I don't what are they then uh, they're called wind farms Mo. I don't see any cattle though no it's a wind farm Mo, not a cow farm all right lucky for you then look at this guy here and his big 750 in the no overtaking zone good man yourself I'll let you in there you bounce in there buddy he's absolutely flying it <laughs> good man yourself you see that's the difference I slowed down now to let him in there he's flying it along and I think you know what good for you buddy you head around there in your big 750 Volvo good for you he looks I'd say it's an owner driver by the look of it he has all the windows tinted black as well and is the fridge the same colour as the unit wouldn't be my choice of colours now but he is tramping rightly along there and he pays no regard whatsoever to the no overtaking signs and he's dead right <laughs> oh I love it good man yourself good man yourself There's the over, no overtaking signs from 6 a.m. until 7 p.m., which is nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. Mr. Germany, Angela Merkel, get your shit together. How are we supposed to make any money if we're not all going as fast as him? <laughs> Bleeding flying, Ned. Oh, he's flying, Mo. He's absolutely hopping it. And good luck to him. More luck to him. More luck to him. A long way to go there too before that's anywhere near done. There's years of work in that, not months, years, years of work in that. somewhere along here I think where the um, the Germans have the yeah it's not too far from here because we're close now look at that fucking gobshite what a fucking idiot 
Yeah, we're not we're not far from the border here now. Well, maybe we're a bit far from maybe we're a bit from it, but it's definitely along this stretch of road where the Germans had their checkpoint. And there was a bit of a queue going into it because they were stopping everything. But not on my side, on the far on this side. In other words, coming into Belgium. So I can expect to be held up in this for a while. Lovely, lovely, lovely road though. It's a beautiful part of Germany this is. It really is nice. And I remember coming down thinking the very same thing. God, how lovely this is. You know, there's nothing nicer than driving through a sort of a nice forest area or that. You know, it's just so peaceful or something. I don't know. I suppose everyone gets a different buzz out of it, but I just think it's just, it really is nice. So there's the Belgian territory uh, sign. And as far as I know, there was a, maybe there's nothing here now, but there was, when I was coming out here the other way, there was a checkpoint there and they were stopping literally everything. I don't see anything stopping here. Now, unless it's further on down. Maybe not, maybe so. No, I don't see anything there now, but there definitely was on the way, on the, on the other way now, they had a checkpoint set up there, the police. There's no sign of them there today, but... Would anybody be able to tell me what that thing there is in front? What is that? It's surely not a trailer, is it? Some part of a crane that they put a, a, a lights on the back of it when it's being delivered. So, so it's road legal. Then again, they've gone to a lot of trouble with the flashing lights and all on the back of it. So, what is it? Does anyone know what that is? You can probably see what I'm doing here now. I'm running along the same same speed as the bus. When you see how much quicker the traffic moves now. He's starting to move quicker already. See, everyone gets into one lane. much quicker it moves now.
I, I'm trying to barge in here and I wouldn't let him in and he's blown the horn like what the fuck are you doing I tell you what I'm doing I'm pinning you out you queue jumping fucking rag ball. get back and get into the queue like everybody else <laughs> it's funny the way they blow the horn at you like you're doing something wrong hey I'm trying to barge here <laughs> I'm trying to barge here come on get out of my way I'm barging can you not see picking the wrong man to barge I'm afraid picking the wrong man to barge you tell him then boy jeez I'll tell him Mo don't you worry sunshine there'll be no one barging old Neddy boy a bit like Johnny Doyle from Islegate no one will barge Johnny Doyle from Islegate oh jeez they won't See, yeah. 